Hey guys, welcome back to Rarity's Corner. It's Emily here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys all the books that I read in So first off, let's ignore me not wearing makeup today. It's just been that type of week. It's been that type of day. I just need to film a video, and I'm sorry that I look like a zombie, but I guess you're just going to have to deal with it for today. But can I just say that this year is going by so fast, like it's already May. I mean, it's already June. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness gracious. Christmas in July is almost here. Like Hallmark movies are almost here. And I find that a little bit concerning. Going to college is almost here literally in two months. I am just a whole mess. So this month I actually felt like I didn't read a lot. But then when I looked back at what I read, I was like, oh... Emily, you kind of did read a lot, so I'm kind of happy with everything that I've read this month, and I hope that you guys are too, but before I show you the books, please subscribe, please comment down below, and like this video. All of my social links are down in the description box below, as well as my Amazon wishlist if you would like to give me a book. Now let's get on into the video. Last night, which was May 31st, I read a Wattpad book. So clearly I can't have it physically, but I wanted to add that because technically that is a book and just like all Wattpad books, it was really bad. It was definitely entertaining though. I just feel like the writing was really not great. It was called Ace and I saw it on TikTok and I was like, you know what? I'm in the mood for a Wattpad book. I just want to get it out of the way, get that out of my system so I can move on to reading real novels. And I gave it two stars wasn't good. It was about like mafia children coming together and like, you know, forming a romance. It was entertaining, um, but I did give it a two stars and let's get on to like the real books that I read. Sorry if that was offensive. I didn't mean it like that. Webpad books are real books. I just meant like published physical books. That's what I meant. But I read the last three books in the Shatter Me series this month. It was a buddy read with somebody outside of booktube in the bookish community and we both really enjoyed them. However, I am disappointed with some of these books so let me get into that. The first book I actually read this month was Restore Me by Tahita Mafi. Of course by Tahita Mafi this whole series is. I don't know why I said that. Restore Me. This book was a lot better than I read the first two times. I thought I only read it one time before this time, but apparently I read it twice already. So this is my third time reading it, and it was a lot better than I remember. 100,000%. The last time, the last two times, I gave it a 3.5 stars because I felt like it was very info dumpy. And I do agree. I feel like a lot of information is thrown at us because Tahada Mafi is trying to form a new plot that is completely different than the first three books. And I do recognize that it is a bit info dumpy. However, this with the whole book, the characters, the development with the relationship between Aaron and Juliet, which is Warner, if you don't know who that is, that's his first name, and Kenji and Juliet, and just everybody in this book, it's so good. The introduction of new characters was so freaking good, and I loved it so much. I gave this book a 4.5 stars. Truly a lot better than the first two times I read it. I cannot wait to reread this, just like I've read the other books 50 billion times. But then we go on to, no, this is the last book, Defy Me by Tahada Mafi. And this is the second to last book, and I didn't like it as much as Restore Me. The writing was on point, the plot that Tahada Mafi put in with Restore Me was on point, but the character interactions and development was a lot less than the last three or last four books. And I didn't like that because that's my favorite part of the whole entire book. Juliet was separated from everybody for most of the book and then she comes back and when she comes back, it's so good. I loved it so freaking much. So that's why I am giving it a 3.5 stars. It is a star down less and it's still a good book and it's still entertaining but it's just not as good as the last four books were. And after this, it just completely went downhill with Imagine Me. This is the last book in this series and I was thoroughly disappointed. This was my first time reading it and I was just upset because this was the ending. I've been reading this series since middle school and I just wanted such a satisfying and complete and perfect ending for all of these characters that I truly, truly love. And this story was complete, but it definitely was not satisfying. In Restore Me, Tahada Mafi tried to introduce a whole entirely different plot line from the first three books, and it felt like she was just trying to complete it as fast as she could in a way that made sense, and she kind of sacrificed all the character relationships because of that, and that's my favorite part, the characters, and we didn't get any of that. Juliet was separated for most of the novel, and Juliet wasn't even Juliet herself for most of the novel, and she was basically brainwashed. So not only did we not see her interact with other characters, but we also didn't see her own character development because she wasn't, she was brainwashed for the whole entire book. 
all of the things that Taha and Mafi was trying to build up like with James and Warner or the marriage if you I, I'm not trying to give away spoilers but there's a marriage um with literally Kenji and Azira I'm just saying character names and like events but I don't really like just they're not spoilers or I'm hoping they're not anyways she built it up so much and I was ready for James and Warner to figure out what they are and I was ready for Warner and Juliet and Kenji and Azira and the marriage and literally everything or what happened with Adam like I was ready for everything to be so satisfying and complete but it wasn't like I feel like everything that she did was a cop-out because she just felt like she had to end it and this whole book was just a huge disappointment like yes this book is complete but it definitely was not satisfying at all and that's why I gave it a two stars which is so hard for me because again I've been reading this since middle school this is my favorite series of all time and now I just have to pretend that this book doesn't even exist because I gave it a two stars and that makes me so mad because Tahani Mafi is my favorite author the writing yes was really really good in this book but it kind of went back to the first book and how Juliet was thinking and took all the annoying parts of that and put it in this book and then the character the lack of character development and in, in interaction was also lacking so not the best so these kind of just went downhill so it just went downhill so let's just go on into the other book now moving on to a thicky a court of mist and fury by sarah j mass this is the second book in the a court of thorns and roses series and it's basically a beauty and the beast retelling but with fairies that's all you really need to know this book though you know what first i'm going to tell you what i didn't like about it before i get into what i did this book is 650 pages of what? Like, why is it that long? There are so many different things that could have been cut out. Truly, I just don't, I just really can't understand why she didn't cut out so many scenes from revisions. And then that also leads into me saying that this book took me a while to get into. It took me about 150 to 200 pages to actually like what I was reading and enjoy everything that was going on. And that is so frustrating because if this was a normal sized novel, that'd be two thirds of the book. And I genuinely would have DNF'd it. But that being said, once I got into it, I got it into it like oh my gosh Reese and Feyre like who let Sarah J Mass write someone that perfect who let Sarah J Mass write somebody that was that perfect for Feyre like I I can't fathom how she wrote this beautiful man or fairy goodness gracious he's amazing and in this book there was also a lot more action than in the first book yes in the first book there was that the, the ending scene where she fought a lot and blah, blah 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 but the whole book we were kind of really doing nothing and in this book we were doing everything yes she could have cut out some scenes however there's a lot more action and favorite doing stuff which I really really enjoyed um but I gave the first book I think I gave it a four stars and I'm definitely bumping that that down to a three stars because I was just trying to be nice because everybody kind of loves this book but this book 100% I'm giving it a 4.25 which I know is annoying but I couldn't give it a 4.5 but this is truly so freaking good uh aside from the action Reese and Feyre have this like mind thing where they can talk to each other because of a bond that he put in in the first book but also just Reese in general can show other people his point of view so even though we didn't get his point of view like in the book we still saw what he saw sometimes and I really really enjoyed that perspective and I really enjoyed their banter in the mind and outside of everything it was just really really good and I really really enjoyed it and I know everybody says that this is their favorite but Christine Christine from the Rumi's Digest said that the third is her favorite and so I'm excited to get to the last book 4.25 super good I'm actually really really glad that I finally read the series the last three books are all a part of a secret TBR video that I am doing and so if you want to guess what that video is definitely guess in the comments down below but the first book that I read for it is The Complete Stories of Leonore and Carrington and this book was not at all what I expected. It's just basically a collection of short fiction that Leonore Carrington made throughout her life from 1917 all the way to 2011. These were so weird and morbid and just like why did she make these like genuinely she was out of her mind there was an introduction done by Katherine Davis at the beginning of the novel basically explaining who she was and what she did in her lifetime this lady was in like a billion different insane asylums and she married different men to move around the globe from Mexico to New Mexico to like the UK like what is going on but she was genuinely just out of her mind and you can definitely see that in her stories they're so morbid there's 
a connection of death and coffins and murder and corpses in every single one also talking animals in every single one mostly horses and sometimes these animals were the main characters lovers it was weird it was definitely weird what did i give this I gave this book a 2.5 stars. It was just weird. I didn't really, there was nothing I got out of it. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, why am I reading this right now? There's no point to the story. I don't understand how anybody can find this entertaining. It's just genuinely so weird to the point that you're just laughing at what is going on. So. I give this a 2.5 stars. I don't understand how people can find this entertaining what they can gain from it I mean like yeah I guess it's like so weird and morbid to the point that it's actually hilarious but other than that like there's no point of the story so 2.5 stars the second to last book that I read is So Sad Today by Melissa Broder this is a collection of personal essays and I was genuinely not disappointed when I read this book. The first line that I read, it says bringing a child into the world without its consent seems unethical and I just knew that this book was going to be really really good and up my alley. I definitely think that this is very very personal, unique, raw, authentic, genuinely so transparent to the point of me not understanding how she was able to publish this because she lays on the table all of her demons and desires and her wants and all of her flaws and it's not like oh my gosh like I have pimples and all that stuff. like genuinely it's so crazy she puts on her table on her table on the table all of her depression and anxiety problems her eating disorders and all of her desires even if they're weird and nobody really accepts them and it's crazy because she said that not even most of the people in her life knew so much about her and now we all are learning everything about her and it i there's some there were some points that she was very she was too transparent and i had to skip like skim a chapter because I was like Melissa Broder you do not need to put that in there she's very vulgar and raw and especially with her language and her love life and her sex life and you're just like Melissa Broder you, don't need to, you could have skipped that whole chapter um but I really find it endearing and I really honestly thought that this was going to be a self-help book where she was just like yeah I went through a lot of crap and I got over it and you can too woohoo but it wasn't like that at all she was like I've been through so much crap I'm still going through so much crap don't think I'll ever get better but at least you know that you're not alone if you're dealing with this and if you feel like you aren't going through what I'm going through maybe this can be entertaining for you and I really found that endearing and comforting because it's just so nice to see somebody else be so real when everybody in this world especially with social media is so not fake but just try to show their best self and with this it was just like I we were literally reading a personal diary it's very feminist and liberal which align with my views <laughs> so I really enjoyed reading it I think the target audience for this is new adult early 20s like mid 20s and beyond so if you want to read that you need to know that's very vulgar and raw and you need to just make sure you know it's not for teenagers um but I gave this book a four stars it was really really good and I I cannot wait to read more Melissa Broder's now the last book I didn't finish but I'm finishing today it's June 1st and I know that's technically I didn't finish it in May but I read most of it in May and I'm finishing it today it is Can't and Won't by Lydia Davis this is another collection of short fiction and oh my gosh her prose oh my gosh how she writes is so simple yet flowery and poetic and you're like wow how are you alive how can you write this good like genuinely give me your talent um, for me at the moment, the only thing I could really say about this book is that whenever I look up a summary, because I genuinely didn't know what this was, book was about, um, every, you couldn't find a summary. Everybody was just like, she's amazing at writing. And I was like, okay, but what is it about? Like, what are the point of these stories? And they are entertaining. They are beautiful stories. But what is the connection with them? At first, I was like, can't and won't. Maybe it's like feminist and maybe she's just going against what society wants from her. And I was just kind of holding on to that. But reading... The first two section, sections of this book I am just confused like I don't know how all of these connect um but they're beautiful so don't have a rating right now I'm not sure if I even will rate it because it's so beautiful yet I don't see the connection of any of these stories um I'm hoping that I do but that was the last book and I hope that you guys enjoyed this haul what is this called a wrap up why am i my brain is not working today i hope that you guys enjoyed this wrap up and i hope some of these books you will pick up and i love you guys thank you so much for watching 
please subscribe, please comment down below, do whatever you want to do, and goodbye.